So uh, now I talked about proteins. Now we go for the characterization of viral nucleic acid or host nucleic acid. If you don't have uh, nylon membranes or nitrocellulose membranes, you wouldn't be able to characterize the, uh, the RNA by northern blood or the DNA by southern blood, or you cannot also do differential display analysis for gene expression analysis. So for this, you isolate the nucleic acid on agarose, and then you transfer into nylon, and then you hybridize with uh, either radiolated probe or uh, biotinylated probe, and then you uh, develop your reaction with a set other than label uh, uh, peroxidase or alkaline phosphatase, and then you further develop a reaction. If, if you don't have a membrane to transfer your nucleic acid into, you wouldn't be able to particularly and specifically define the viral nucleic acid. Or the host genome or host gene uh, differential, uh, differential gene expression in response to viral infection. Um, so again, if you were to isolate viral RNA or, vi or host DNA, uh, or host RNA, you need to have a membrane-based columns. And these are a variety of membrane-based col uh, columns, ranging from the many to midi to maxi. In according to the, 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 the capacity of the column, you expect the yield of the purified nucleic acid. And if you want to do this uh, for uh, several samples simultaneously, uh, you can use high throughput system. So this is uh, the different stages of membrane-based isolation of nucleic acids of any pathogen. Uh, in our case, uh, those guys who are working on, uh, on corona wouldn't have been able to characterize the viral genome or sequence it if they didn't have the membrane-based columns. Uh, so the nanopore sequencing technology uh, or the, the next generation whole genome sequencing technology is based on uh, silicon oxide or silicon nitride uh, or graphene membranes. And uh, you apply potential deference on the whole uh, nucleic acid strand and you get it passing through this uh, membrane and you, you're able to sequence as many nucleotides as you wish. So without this technology, you wouldn't have been able to monitor the nucleotide, nucleotide changes emerging or any mutation emerging. So you, you hear every day about variants of the virus. So you don't do this, you don't sequence variants uh, on uh, single copy number sequencing, but you need to sequence the whole genome of the virus and you need to sequence as many variants as possible to record or figure out changes in the viral genome. So I'm, I'm gonna share with you now something that is done by uh, Dr. Dina Nadim, uh, assistant professor in my lab, uh, uh, in collaboration with uh, Professor Shaban team, uh, with Dr. Heba, Dr. Marwa, and the rest of the team. Uh, we, we, we've been discussing uh, possibilities for collaboration in the office of His Excellency when he was the, the Vice President of, uh, of the NRC. At that time, uh, I came to his office. I, I remember that day, I was just coming back from Germany after a long time, and I've been addressing possibilities for collaboration. Uh, so one of the things that jumped to our mind is uh, the, the quality of the water, tap, tap water that is coming in, in our laboratories, in whether this is enough to be used for biotech application and what kind of treatment that we wanted to do. I, I showed you at the beginning of my presentation the fancy deionizing double distilled water uh, equipment uh, or the millicule water equipments that we buy for uh, a lot of money in to maintain or to, to change the columns. You need plenty of money, so the maintenance is the big issue, actually. It's not to buy the equipment, but to keep it running. 
And every six months, you need to, to change the spell, the columns. Otherwise, in, it's pain in the neck. It's pain in the neck of the scientists and the pain in the neck of the administration of the NRC to afford the money. At that time, he was in charge of this. So I was writing in a paper that we need this and we start to bargain how much will it cost. And, uh, you know, uh, in, at the end of the day, they buy, they buy it. But, but if buy 10 uh, columns for 10 equipments at once, every six months, you need to change this. In, we, we were thinking of an economic way to replace this. So uh, what they did, I don't know that you can ask uh, Professor Shaban, Dr. Heba, or Dr. Marwa, uh, they, they develop, develop cost-effective multi-stage water purification system to replace or to compare the quality of the outcome of the uh, outlet water from this system with the quality of the water that is supplied with molecular biology grade, biology grade reagents, or with uh, or coming from the MeliQ water equipment, the, the expensive ones. And uh, this is the result that we could, the first comparison, the fat means the water that is coming from the tap water, the kit that means that this, uh, the molecular biology grade water that is coming with kits, with molecular biology reagents, and ours means the ones that they provided to us after this multi-stage treatment of the, of the water. And apparently, you see the fed water is giving really nice in, in, in isolation of a molecular weight DNA marker on, 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 on agarose gel. But, but actually speaking, the, the, the water that they could prepare and uh, provide to us was really very comparable, if not uh, better of quality, in terms of the sharpness and the 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 the, the, the obviousness of the of the of the isolated bands on the agarose well. we thought that this is by chance. Okay, let's do something else. And at that time, uh, we we have established PCR reactions to detect whatever viral nucleic acid or bacterial nucleic acid. And we used the three different water samples or water sources. Uh, in the PCR mixture reaction, the PCR reaction mix. In, as you see, the fed water is next to the marker. Here, this faint band. Our, in this fat, uh, thick, very clear band in the molecular biology grade uh, water that comes with the kit is a very long span. And I hope that uh, the result is very clear. And their water works very nicely. In the, if he knew this before being in the cabinet as a vice president, he would have avoided buying a lot of equipment, which were very uh, costly. And he would have convinced also the, 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 the president of the NRC at that time to replace all these systems by the, the system that he is building. And this is among the patents actually that he was describing yesterday that it is uh, applied now or under evaluation. So this is one of the nine patent applications. In, so uh, so was, it, was it all? No, this is not the, the whole thing that I want. Sorry for, uh, for having this uh, rotating. Uh, I, 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 should, I would have rotated this before a presentation. Uh, so now uh, I, I wanted to show you if we prepare growth medium of bacteria, Three minutes? Yeah. That's too many for me. I'm already done. So if you use the, the water to, uh, to, to prepare growth media for bacteria, now you use uh, the filtered water that they prepared, the fed water that is coming from the tap, in the controlled water that is provided by kids. You see that the water, the bacteria like more the water. In, if, uh, in some other case for staff audience, uh, well fed water was really uh, astonishing, but it was really logic. Some, some people overuse uh, this deionizing, deionized double distilled water equipment and use it in the wrong approach or in the wrong direction because some, some bacteria need actually minerals to grow and they remove the minerals. And they think that they are doing something good for a microbiologist like Professor Shaban can tell you about that. 
that sometimes you don't need to, to, to remove a lot of minerals to be able to grow, to grow, uh, to grow the bacteria. So, uh, so now I'm getting to the conclusions. He gave me three minutes I, in, that, in, in one minute. Membrane filtration has major applications in biotechnology research. Building bridges between material scientists and bi biotechnologists is a must to improve and add on such applications. This can lead to developing spin of companies which are highly welcome at the political level. Is a country I am done translated into a proof uh, that can exchange Haga and Shriya Shay for any. You may let the Ayman Lahna Tamilo Ahsan, Tapa and Hapagan, the Arabic, the Yani Ash and Hadish Yefan. This was something very special that I wanted to share with my people in Arabic. Uh, so the this can lead to developing spin of companies which are highly welcomed at the political level. Any products in this direction can be absorbed by the Egyptian biotech market. By the way, I'm not talking only about the Egyptian biotech market, but we can satisfy the whole region if, you, if, if we really uh, build uh, uh, this uh, collaborative networks. Uh, So uh, uh, at the end of my presentation, I'd like to acknowledge a uh, couple of people from my group, Dr. Dean and Nadim, and uh, uh, Associate uh, Researcher Rula Nadim. And I wish to also thank all the team of the flagship membranes for the collaboration. And I thank you for the invitation. And I thank you all for your attention. And I look forward to the discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you.